Okay. I'm here with little Zion. Zion is a five month old rat terrier who has some anxiety. We have a kitty cat that's uh, our camera person. So if you hear some meows, that's just giving me some direction. All right, so Zion has some anxiety uh, with the long-term confinement area. Now he is okay going in here. He just doesn't like being left in here. Um, all right, so uh, there's our kitty. There we go. <laughs> all right, so um, I always like to assign a word or a name for things. And so um, we were at, the Guardian has struggled, and so we talked a little bit. So if you're coming up with a name, come up with a fun name. Dogs are one of the few animals that can actually recognize a human facial expression. So when I had the setup for my Dalmatian, I called it Station as in Fire Station. Um, so the uh, Guardian here loves Alaska, so we're gonna call this Alaska. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna build a little bit of an, uh, motivation to wanna go in here. Zion, as you can see, really likes these treats, and I'll celebrate that, yes, or good, is his marker word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it, and now it's locked. And then I'm going to show Zion I have this treat, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And he's a little guy, so I'm turning the treats in small pieces. When you get a treat, you want to have it as small as you can get away with, as low value as you can get away with. So what I'm doing is just kind of tossing a couple more in there. I'm going to do this about three to six treats, and I'm going to put them in different areas. Yes, Zion, right there. That one he might be able to get, oh, almost. There we go. So all I'm trying to do is just build some motivation that I want to go in here because this is where all these treats are. Now again, he doesn't have a problem with it, but this is a video I figured people who are training their puppies and dogs to go in the long-term confinement area might watch. So basically, you see, there's pretty clear interest. Now, what we, uh, when we use a, a cue, we want the cue to come before the action. So as I open this, I'm going to say the word Alaska right before he goes in here, and then I'm going to say the word good, which is his marker word, so he understands that means that he did the right thing. Um, so let's move over and get out of the way. All right. Alaska, good. I waited until he had one paw in there before I said good. So now you see he's going in there, he's looking for all these treats. Now, does he get fed in here? Okay. If you're not already doing this, feed your puppy or your dog in here. That's a great way for them to uh, uh, build some positive associations. Do you feed him out of a snuffle mat? No, uh, the training. This thing, okay. Yes. So you can use a puzzles like this. This isn't a bad one. Um, it just they have to move it to get in, in here. And this is actually one of the few puzzle-like ones that I like because well, if there are pieces that you put on top, I just find most dogs just knock it all off and they eat all the stuff. So this is a good one. But um, I asked, uh, you know, if you play a video game, although Fortnite has kind of changed it, but usually we play a different video game after a while, we get bored. So I would get a snuffle mat. A snuffle mat is, uh, the one I like is the Rundick, R-U-N-D-I-C-K, or D-I-K, is how it's spelled. And they have a small one for a dog his size and a large one. Uh, so I would uh, basically uh, feed him maybe this, uh, this one meal, the snuffle mat the next meal. I also like the Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Treat Ball. It's an orange ball, kind of looks like a golf ball. And uh, uh, the dog has to roll it to just right. Zion! Here, buddy. Let's get you back in here. He was having a, a disagreement with the cat. Um, the cat's like, oh, the other cat. Now we're gonna get have cat. Yes, it's uh, cat syndrome. That's all right. We 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 love all animals here at TGP. Zion, puppy, puppy, puppy. It's kind of hard to not chase a cat. Um, all right. So um, uh, so feeding him in here in a treat dispensing toys and puzzles will elongate how long he's in here having something desirable or positive happening. Now he's left away, so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple treats in there, and I'm going to go ahead and close the door again, and I can kind of position these. Try to position them so they're not all just right in one area. I didn't have a lot of room at the time there. There we go. And so again, he sees the treats. He wants to go in there. And there's nothing wrong with doing it every once in a while. You can even leave some treats in here when you're kind of watching TV. Elongate a little bit. Play a little hard to get. All right, so here we go. Alaska. Good. So the first thing, uh, and uh, one other little note. You see there's nice enrichment items in here. Um, the Guardian put the second uh, dog bed in here because uh, the dog's having some potty issues. I don't usually like having two in here because... Uh, I want the only soft place to be in the kennel. So that way I kind of motivated to go in there. Now because of your doorway here, it's fine, but I probably would put the kennel over there with the door facing this direction. So it's not quite here in the entryway. Not a big deal that you have it this way, but sometimes this gets hung up um, and uh, sometimes this will cause the door to close. I, I guess you have it 
if you have a wire shut open, which is great. You want to keep it open so that it basically it kennel trains your dog for them. Um, so um, when you get that out of there, he just has a little bit more room to run around. He's a rat terrier. He's got a lot of energy. And so uh, that kind of limits. That's, a, that's almost a third of the space, you know, a quarter of the space in there with that extra dog bed. You already have a nice soft one right here for him. So now the next stage is I want to have him just go in here. Alaska, good. And so I want to keep on doing this stage until he's comfortable going uh, in there. He goes in without any hesitation and he lingers. Now you can also get a lick mat. Have you ever done a lick mat in here? No, not in there. A lick mat is a silicone mat that has grooves or shapes in it. And you can smear peanut butter or cream cheese or frozen yogurt on it. You put it down, get the one that has suction cups. It will stay on the floor. And you put it in there in the back. The only way I can lick this thing is by going in here. We're going in here on our own. And again, now he's left. So I'm going to toss a couple treats in there. And I'm going to close the door again and put one in the, uh, uh, there we go, put one in the uh, dog bed. And just again, I want to kind of put him all sorts of different spots. So that when he goes in here, there's more variety for him. Buddy, buddy, buddy. There we go. All right. So now while she calls Zion, I will reposition myself over here. Um, and, he's, and you see, he's looking for me for the treats. Same thing with the cats. Hey, kitty. Um, and I want Zion to kind of notice that those cats are there. And there we go. We have a, we have a lick mat. So can you, yes, this is a lick mat. Um, and so this is great. It has different shapes. So you just put stuff in here. And so now he's scratching. That's a wonderful indication that he wants to go in here. Alaska, good. I'm always saying good when he wants, when he goes in there. And then he just gets all the treats. Uh, now, when I close this door, that can make some dogs feel trapped. And so when I, right now he's looking for treats. What I'd like to do is if when you're feeding him, or if he has this, or something else I'm, or, uh, something else I'm gonna talk about, I wanna have you close it. So he practices being in there. Right now he's distracted. He doesn't care about wanting to come out. And so uh, when he does, uh, when he shows that he's ready to come out, what I'm gonna do is I wanna start lengthening the time that he's in here. But let's talk about something else we can do in here. We can get a bully stick. A bully stick is you know, kind of like a long strip. And basically I can drill a hole through the end of a bully stick and I can get a zip tie and zip tie it to the end of the lower end of his kennel. Or I could do it along, on one of these walls, like right here. And when you do it, do it loose, thank you. There we go. So a bully stick, you drill it through this hole and there's a zip tie and so it's zip tied here, loose. Don't do it tight, because sometimes he wants to chew it this way, sometimes he wants to chew it that way. Um, I'll give you this in a sec. So that's tethered in there. The only place he can chew it is by going in here. So he is choosing to go in here and when he does go in there, good things happen. A lot of times we put him in there and the door is closed like this, he looks as a negative. So I can feed him a treat here through the side and I can take a little bit of time in between each treat. See, he's looking at me and he's thinking about it. Sit, yes, good. Give him another piece of a treat. And again, small pieces of treat. And we hear the cats grumbling and that's okay. Sit, good. And what I wanna do at first, you might have to treat, 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 but eventually it's treat. Treat, treat. What are we doing? We're lengthening the time that he is inside here that he in a positive way. Uh, so um, you can also get uh, dental chews. Um, uh, uh, marrow bones are very, very high value. Now marrow bones, you should get frozen and if it's not frozen, well, yeah, just get them frozen. Go to like Long Dog Fat Cat or the Green Spot and get some of those. Now you can drill through the marrow, be careful because it'll kind of liquefy it. And then you could uh, also anchor that in there. But this one, I think you could probably, a marrow bone is something you could probably put in there and just close the door and he's just gonna be happy getting that marrow. He's not gonna worry about coming out. Now the bully stick or a tendon or a cow's ear, um, uh, there's all sorts of different animal parts that you can do for this that you can tether in there. So I'd like at all times to have one of these items tethered in there. And after he gets done with the bully stick, the next time get a tendon. Do that. Next time, get uh, something else. Another item that I like giving dogs in here are uh, uh, cow kneecaps. Cow kneecaps are good for usually several uh, chew sessions, like and you know, like ten to twenty chew sessions. They'll chew all the flesh off. It might take him a couple times to do that. But now, when we're doing this, I don't want him to want to come out. So if he does protest, I'm going to let him out. I don't want him to cry it out or protest because then he's panicking and feeling trapped. The whole point of this is we want him to feel comfortable. And there's a treat right here. Hey, there's a treat there. You're stepping on it, literally. You're literally stepping on it with your back paw. All right, now sometimes I like to assign a cue for this. So I might say, find it. It's 
right here. Good. Normally, we don't say the mark word when the dog gets a treat. They say the mark word for the action, then they get the treat. But in this case, getting the treat is what we're looking for. So I can say, find it. Find it. Good. Good. So uh, we can uh, toss treats in there. So the idea is what we just basically the summarization of this, uh, summar summarization, I'm making up new words, um, is we want to just basically create things for him to want to go in here, find it. Good and lengthen the time that he's in here. I asked the guardian, can you sit here on the couch? The TV's right here, this is the main hangout area. She goes, yeah, but he kind of starts whimpering, so sometimes she'll sit closer to him. He should be able to, this is only about three feet. He should be able to handle that fine. If you give him a marrow bone in here and close the door, he's practicing being in here while you're right there. And he's got a marrow bone. So he's comfortable and content doing it. Um, feeding him out of a snuffle mat, again, is something that'll cause him to, to spend a little bit more time in here. You can also do basic training like I'm gonna do right here. Um, sit. Don't say your key more than once. Good. Does he have a down? So you, you, maybe you do it over there uh, once you've teached him down and you're offering the treats that way. So he's doing it. Most dogs like to lay down on a more of a soft surface. Now sometimes they like to uh, hard surface like this, but sometimes it's slippery. Um, but the idea is we're going to be, that's okay if the cat's in the shot. Um, the, and there you go. I don't want him to paw to want to get out here. So if we create, I'm old, and if I sit here like this for too long, my knees are going to go bad. Um, so we want to just basically try to lengthen and spend the amount of, uh, track the, or increase the amount of time that he's in here. Now what we could do is journal this. So maybe just start a stopwatch and how long he's in there. And we don't want to go until he whines. So maybe we spend three minutes in here doing del the delayed treats like I'm doing right here. So you see, he's not protesting trying to get out because I'm throwing the treats inside. I'm not giving the treats outside. Oh, okay, now he is a little bit, but I think it's probably because the cat's in. Good. So you could ask him to sit and then good and toss a treat in there. Once he knows down, good and toss a treat in there. Find it, throw that in the snuffle mat. That makes it a little bit harder for him to find it. And so the idea is just to uh, create different things for him to do. Now, the one that I was talking about first is just like treat, 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 and then gradually lengthen that, lengthen that. You want to get to the point where, and you will see a dog like him where sometimes you can go several minutes and he's sitting there waiting for you to say, do something and get that next treat. Sit, good. And basically, I'd like you to start a journal. So basically, start write the date at the top, write the time, the start time, the stop time. And it'll, you know, just keep it on your little hope chest here. And so after a while, you'll see, you know, okay, today we got four minutes. Next day, we got six minutes. Next day, we got 12 minutes. But we want to have all this time without any protesting, any whimpering, any want to get out. So you can leave some treats in here like I am now. And so he's going to find those. And so I want him to go in there and like, this is spelunking adventure time. I'm going to go in here and use my nose and find stuff. Um, and you, the idea is just gradually increase the amount of time that he's in here calm and relaxing until eventually this is like my room. I have a Dalmatian in Quest I mentioned earlier. I just set one of these things up. Now he's seeing the cat getting attention. That's why he's doing this. Um, but uh, that's different than whining that I want to get out. Hey. Um, I set one of these up for, uh, for Quest uh, just for a demonstration purpose. And Quest hasn't been in it for eight years. He ran inside and laid down. He's so comfortable. Yes, I know you want to rile up with the cats. Now this is, if, and if the cats are really going crazy, that would not be a great time for, although it's not the worst thing if he's in here with the cats, he's riling up, but I prefer this to be more of a calm time. Now last little tip, putting, me in, putting him in here, like after, after exercise, after puppy class, at the time that he's nice and calm, so that he's going to be more likely to relax. And he does sleep in here, right? Yes. So you don't actually eat in here, sleep in here, be in here anytime that you can't supervise him. Um, and, uh, and try to uh, not have the cats right nearby. You see there's a tree right behind me. I talked to the guardian about maybe moving that to a different location. You see he is a little agitated because he's locked up and the cats are not. The cats are kind of like, yeah, yeah, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. How about this? How about this? Now, if the cats are around and he has a lick mat, that's a good thing because now he's like, you can't get my lick mat. I'm licking this and you can't have it, kitty, kitty. All right, uh, Zion. Well, this is my buddy Zion, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that's anxious or doesn't like going in the long-term confinement area.